everyone, it's Natasha. In today's video, we're going to do a flip through of first grade math with confidence. Last year, I did a flip through of kindergarten math with confidence. And so I wanted to show you first grade math with confidence. So you can take a look inside and see if this would be a great math curriculum for your little one. So let's turn this camera around and check it All out. All right, so first grade math with confidence comes with the instructor guide and the student workbook. And yes, you absolutely do need the instructor guide because this has all of the instruction. So do not do it without it. I know it's so tempting to do curriculums with, you know, out the instructor guide, but I typically never recommend doing that, but especially not with this program. So first grade math with confidence instructor guide. I just like how it looks too, you know what I mean? Okay, so here's unit one numbers to 10. Unit two, addition to 10. Unit three, shapes. Unit four, subtraction to 10. Unit five, numbers to 20. Unit six, numbers to 100. Unit seven, length. Uh, unit eight, addition facts to 20. Unit nine, time and money. Unit 10, subtraction facts in the teens. Unit 11, mental math with two digit numbers. There are 32 weeks of curriculum. Each week is four days with an optional fifth day. All right, so here we have our introduction. Welcome to first grade math with confidence. It has scripted, scripted open and go lessons, clear goals at the beginning of each lesson, explanatory notes and checkpoints. The checkpoints are designed so you can see like, has my student mastered all the information up to this point? If so, keep going. If not, maybe take a pause and revisit some of those topics. All right. And then we'll go into, I do suggest reading all of this information, but I'm going to kind of talk you through it a little bit too, but it does definitely um, explain to you kind of what you should be doing, how a lesson should work. Uh, for example, the lessons start with a warm up and then hands on activities and then the workbook. Now, I want you to notice here, the warm up is three to five minutes. The hands on activities are 10 to 15 minutes. And then the workbook is five to 10 minutes. This, the warm up and hands on activities, you will not find in the student workbook. And as you can see, this is actually the majority of the lesson is actually in the teacher guide, not in the student workbook. The workbook is really used to reinforce what they've learned and kind of like show what you know type of thing. It's really not the lesson itself. Okay, and then there's, an, for the enrichment lessons, which are optional, those are those fifth day lesson, there's a warm up, a picture book, and an enrichment activity. Now, we only uh, do homeschool four days a week because my girls do go to an enrichment program on the fifth day. However, I love doing the enrich enrichment lessons, so I just kind of try to tie them in to another day, basically. Um, and typically, I'll do the picture book one day and then an, the enrichment activity a different day when we have um, additional time. All right, and here are the, um, the criteria to see if your child is ready for first grade math with confidence. They should count to at least 10, preferably higher, write the numbers from one to 10, identify basic shapes, and solve simple addition or subtraction word problems by acting them out with concrete objects. Okay. And just gives you um, some information what you should do if, you, if your child isn't understanding, if they're getting frustrated, that sort of thing. You do need some materials for your math kit, such as counters, pattern blocks, coins, and play money and index cards, along with playing cards and dice, a clock with hands, a ruler, blank paper, pencils, and a binder with 20 plastic page protector, protectors. This is um, really just to keep your uh, black line masters that you that are copyable, which I'll show you those um, kind of in um, in a binder put together. But that's that's really optional. Okay, and then um, you will, if you want to do the optional lessons, you will need the uh, the additional books that they recommend. But you could just get those from the library. Okay, so each unit starts off like this where it's got unit one, it gives you an overview of the unit, what your child will learn, and then the recommended math picture books, which are optional for this unit. So if you wanna plan your unit, now each book will be a different week, but if you wanna look at your unit as a whole, know what's coming up, what books you will need, 
this is what you can look at. Then we've got week one. It always gives us a review of, uh, or an overview, I'm sorry, of what your child will be learning each day of the week and um, any extra materials you might need and kind of like what they're going to be learning. And then here we jump into the actual lesson. So notice it says lesson 1.1. So this is the first week, the first day. So it's 1.1 is day one, 1 1.2 is day two and so forth. So here we've got the, um, it kind of gives a, I, I love this because it gives us a little breakdown of what our lesson is going to look like. So we're going to have the warm up activities and workbook and um, then it goes into more detail for each one. So for today's warm up, we'll be counting from one to 20, one, two, three, so forth. And then we're going to do a number scavenger hunt. Like how fun is that, right? And then we're going to introduce the math kit. And then we're going to make number cards and uh, play a little game. And then we're going to do our workbook page. So as you can see, it's very hands-on. And then we go into 1.2. And then here we're going to, as you can see, at, okay, let me point this out. As you can see, it's it's very scripted. So it's in the bold is what you, the teacher, will say. Who has more cookies? How do you know? And then it gives you a sample answer for what they might say. I do because eight is more than seven. Um, and then you have a game to play, which is war, and then your workbook page. So as you can see, it's lots of hands on, which I love. And then day a 1.3, another game, 1.4, and then 1.5 is the enrichment and review, which is optional. And so you're going to be reading Missing Math, a number mystery, and you're going to, your enrichment activity is a My Numbers poster. And then here is the answer key if you need the answer key. Okay, so let me jump into about uh, halfway through the course. All right, so we've got week 17. Not That's a little more than halfway, but that's okay. We're gonna roll with it. So we've got our overview here each day, what they're going to be learning, um, the importance of reasoning about place value, extra materials needed, you'll need a zip top bag, and for the enrichment activity, you'll need book only one, and a weather forecast from your area. And then here, again, the lesson is laid out the same way. So we've got our little box here that shows us our warm-up activities and workbook, any materials we need, so very easy to see. Here is our warm-up, and then we're going to do an activity, which is to compare two-digit numbers. And don't you love how it shows you, like, what this actually looks like? Here's our scripted um, lesson, you know, how many digits does this number have? What are the digits? And so forth. Here's another activity. We're going to play two digit war now. And that's funny that I turned to both lessons that had war, but I didn't actually do that on purpose. And then uh, our workbook is to compare two digit numbers and review. And then lesson 17.2, same thing. I just love how this is so easy to follow. It's very easy to see what it's talking about. So even if you don't have a background in teaching, a background in math, um, it's not just about the uh, process, it's about the, the concept and understanding. There is a heavy, heavy focus on place value in this curriculum, which is fantastic in my opinion, because uh, students who don't understand place value tend to have a more difficult time with math. So I would not skip the activities, even if you think that, well, this is too easy, my child already knows this, because you may find that they don't actually understand the place value aspect. So. Um, the activities are in here for a purpose and I do highly suggest doing them. Okay, and then let's see, um, for lesson 17, our enrichment and review activity, we're going to be you know, warming up, counting memory work and review. Oh, I forgot to mention the memory work. There is math and memory work. And in the back, there is a list of all the memory work. So if you are a classical homeschooler, you will appreciate that. Memory work is just basically things your child should memorize. So I'll show you kind of an overview of what the memory work is um, each day, but I forgot to mention that. So anyways, um, then our math picture book is only one, and then our enrichment activity 
uh, is to compare temperatures. So like I said, I easily can fit these in on another day. For example, we might read the book at bedtime one day and then um, maybe, you know, compare temperatures. We might do that in the morning one day, for example. So I can easily like throw those in. But if you do do five days a week, then you can just do it on a separate day. All right. And then here, let me show you this checkpoint. So this is the unit six checkpoint. And um, this is by the end of use, unit six, most children will be able to, and then it tells you all the things that they're able to, they should be able to do. And is your child ready to move on? And so then you would decide yes or no. Um, can we move on or do we need to kind of go back and refocus on these things a little bit more? The great thing is, is when you go back, you can redo these lessons and replay these games as many times as you want. Since the majority of the curriculum is really the teacher's guide and not the workbook, you can repeat things as many times as you need to in order for your child to grasp it. So I love that too. All right, and so then let's go to the end of the book. So we've got review and celebrate, yay! So we have our warm up, counting, memory work, and review, activity, celebrate what your child has learned about numbers to 100. And um, here it says review numbers with your favorite activities and so forth. And, and, and let me show you too, well, let's finish here anyway. Okay, and then our enrichment and review. So, all right. Here is our complete memory work list. And so you can, uh, basically each week, um, you will, or each day, you'll practice your memory work. And so it starts off, you know, raise your left hand, raise your right hand. How much is a penny worth? A nickel? and so forth. And then um, basically every other week they're learning some more new information. And that's how that works. And then there's no new memory work introduced after week 26. So you have plenty of time to finish memorizing all this um, after week 26 because there is 32 weeks in the curriculum. So um, and then here is our scope and sequence. I love this too because I can easily see what is coming up. And then our complete picture book list. Um, basically what I did and my marks on here, the L stands for library. That means I'm going to get them from the library and the stars mean I need to purchase. That's essentially what I did there. So and then we have our materials list. So if you want to gather like everything you might possibly need all at once, um, you can, you know, look at this. I honestly have never like come across something that I'm like, oh, I don't have that. I have to go buy that. I, I've had everything on hand, so that hasn't been a big deal. Okay. And then this is what I wanted to show you. It is the game list and extra game boards. So if, like I said, you find your child struggling on a specific concept, then you can come here and say, okay, my child's having, um, trouble with, um, I, I don't know, <laughs> with uh, pairs that make 10. And then you can see, oh, look, pairs that make 10. There's two games, make 10 go fish and make 10 py pyramid solitaire. You can go to 3.3 .3 and 3.4 to go back to those game directions. So I really love that too. And then we have our helpful resources. These are things that you can use or you need to use for a lot of the games and things. And then, um, and you can copy these or you can just tear them out. And then, so any of the game boards that you need. The part total now of those shape cards. Tell them what. And like these are pattern blocks, like we have pattern blocks. So I didn't use pattern block masters, but if you don't have pattern blocks and you can use these, that sort of thing. And I also have play coins. So again, I don't need these, but they're there in case you don't have these things, you can cut these up. Okay. So then we have our student workbook and here's our table of contents here. Now I am going to jump to here 
This is kind of where we have left off. So we are beginning uh, lesson 14. So I will go through kind of a few different uh, lessons in this workbook so you can kind of see what it is like. But here is basically each day they will have uh, a front and a back, okay? So at the bottom you can see it says 14.1A and then 14.1B. So this is, you know, week 14, day one, they would do this page. And as you can see, it is uh, not a lot of work, right? Because the, the main work that the student is doing is through games and hands-on activities from the teacher guide. But this is kind of like, I just call it show what you know, you know, show mommy what you know. And, um, and then we have some review of subtraction here and then they're matching the tally. So obviously they're learning about tally marks. And then um, like right here, see the instructor guide for directions on how to complete the bar graph. Like you can't do this curriculum without the teacher guide. You really can't, I can't stress that enough. Um, and then on the back, and then we have one point, I mean, 14.3. And 14.3b, 14.4, and 14.4b. Notice there's not any worksheet for 14.5. 14.5 is that enrichment day where you're doing the book and the enrichment activity. So there's no worksheet for that fifth day of the week. And uh, we move into week 15. So now let's go more towards uh, closer to the end. Let's do, yeah, let's do week 29. And don't you love how beautiful this is? I feel like it's very beautiful. And these pages tear out really nicely too. So if you're wanting to take them on the go, they just, they're perforated so nicely. See, so I love that too. Okay, so we've got uh, 29.1A and 29.1B and 29.2A and B and so forth. It's always a mix of the concept that they're working on that week, and then the back tends to be like more of a review of previous concepts learned. But that is what this curriculum looks like. Isn't that cute? My favorite math activity this year was, that's so cute. <laughs> and a little certificate at the end. So I hope, okay, so I hope that was helpful to you and you got an idea of how the first grade Math with Confidence program works. I am very happy with it. It is like the perfect math program for me. I love how it has short lessons. I love how it's hands-on. I love how it incorporates the uh, read the literature books to in, enforce and enhance the lessons each week. I actually love everything about it. It's colorful, it's easy to use, my daughter likes it. So I highly recommend it. And I look forward to using second grade math with confidence next year. So this is something that we can continue to use and plan to continue to use. So definitely go check it out. I love the Well-Trained Mind products and I'll leave a link down below where you can find it. As always, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you love all things homeschool.